Good afternoon. I'm Dr. Bradshaw, and I'm doing a review for uh, lumbar films and for uh, lumbar obliques. Right now I'm going to do the A to P lumbopelvic view. I'm starting with a dry spine of just two lumbar segments. I wanted to just point out things uh, without looking at the whole film. Uh, number one right here is a spinous process. It goes all the way up to here, goes all the way down to here. It looks like it's almost hollow, but that's because you see the periosteum stands out more than the inside of bone. And spinuses in the lumbar spine are actually very flat and very thin, and so that's why it sort of looks like it's hollow, but it really is not. That, of course, is the periosteum right there. Number two is labeling the pedicle. And the pedicle is all of this circle right here, the pedicle is all of this, and on this side we would be all of this. Number three, the superior articular process. Superior goes up to here, comes down right there. All of that is the superior articular process. And so you see the joint space right here at the point of the arrow. That's the joint space called the apophyseal joint. Number five is the inferior articular process, the inferior of this segment, and it comes all the way down to right here. And so all of this is the inferior articular process. Number four, all of this is the transverse process. Now the transverse process looks really dark on the screen, but that's because transverse processes do not have a lot of density in the lumbar spine. And so, you know, they're just not going to show up very clear on an x-ray because they're huge as far as size and length, but they do not have a lot of density. And so that is the transverse process right there. Number five, again, I already did that, and that is the inferior articular process. Now, six versus seven. You see the edge of the pedicle is this right here. And so number seven is immediately medial to the pedicle. And immediately medial to the pedicle would be the pars interarticularis. Pars interarticularis. So all of this portion right here is the pars. Whereas number six is this section that is right up close to the spinous process, and that would be lamina. So we have pedicle, then pars, then lamina, then spinous process, in that order from lateral to medial. If I move to another film, I'm going to just stay on the video while I switch it to another view. If I move to another film and... I do this. We have, of course, number one again is the spinous process. Number two is on the pedicle. Number three, the superior articular process comes up right here and the joint space is right there. Let's go to this side. You see the joint space right there at the point of the arrow? And so on this side is the superior articular process and on this side is the inferior articular process. Uh, number four, is, well there it is, is on the transverse process, but again they don't have a lot of density so they're not showing up very well on this screen. Number five we just did is the inferior articular process. Number six is looking at the lamina, again right up next to the spinous process is the lamina portion of the segment, whereas number seven, if I move my arrow out closer to the pedicle, I would be on number seven, which is um, the pars interarticularis. Immediately medial to the pedicle is the pars. Number 10 is the second sacral tubercle. Number 11 is the SI joint. You're not really looking through the SI joint because you have an overlapping of sacral ala with the posterior aspect of the ilium. So all of this is the sacral ala, and this is your joint space. But including myself, we, we point to this edge right here and expect you to label that SI joint. But really, if you need to see the SI joint, you would take what is called a sacral oblique view. Now, we can just barely see the top of the iliac crest coming up right here. We can, of course, see the femur head extended into the acetabular cup. You see the indentation on the femur head is called the fovea capitis. We can see, of course, the acetabular rim is this white edge right along right here. And then it comes down to this really white part right here that's sort of shaped like a raindrop, and that is called Kohler's teardrop, that increased white density right here. The superior pubic rami is here. 
the obturator foramen is here. Immediately lateral to the obturator would be the ischial tuberosity. And when you're looking at ischial tuberosity, you sort of wonder about that ischial spine, and you can see the ischial spine is right there. Ischial spine is going to be medial to the uh, femur head. Usually it shows up inside the cavity, but this one you see is sitting right there, just medial to that, that sideways V shape. Down here, of course, would be the inferior pubic ray line. You have the pubic symphysis here. And sometimes you can see the lesser trochanter. Sometimes you can see the greater trochanter. They're right across from each other at an angle. See the femoral neck on this film sometimes. This film is rather dark. It is one that is out of the textbook, but it's rather dark as far as I'm concerned. And so I'm going to actually move to another film as well. If I move down to, let's see, I'm going to keep the video running while I do this rather than turn it off and turn it on. Let's pick this film right here. So now if I look at these same items, number 13 is the superior pubic ray line, number 15 is the obturator foramen, number 16 is Kohler's teardrop, 17 is the greater trochanter, 18 is cut off the edge of the film right here, lesser trochanter. 14 would be the inferior pubic rami. 19 would be the pubic symphysis. 23 would be the ischial tuberosity. And you see how number 6, this sideways V inside the cavity, medial to the femur head, is the ischial spine. Ischial spine. I make this bigger, I think maybe you'll be able to see that ischial spine. You can just barely see it right there. And the number six is sitting right on top of it. Number seven would be called the pelvic brim. Number three, again, is the SI joint. Number nine, sacral ala. Ten is labeling the posterior aspect of the ilium. But again, posterior aspect comes all the way down to right here. And chiropractically, that would be called the PSIS. And down here would be the PIIS. Out here would be the ASIS. And number five is labeling the AIIS. Number one is the first sacral tubercle. This is the spinous process of the last lumbar. Number 11 is labeling the acetabular rim. And again, here is your Kohler's teardrop, which is number, number 16 on the other side. 12, again, is the fovea capitis. 4 is the ASIS, 22 is the iliac crest. Now these dark spots right here, and number 8 is labeling this gas pattern, which sometimes you do have to notice the gas pattern just to make sure that you're not thinking that that is a pathology. Patients also will sometimes be scared by that because they don't know what that is, so you may have to point out that that's just a gas pattern and that it is normal in that portion of the skull. Number 20 right here is the coccyx. Now the reason that the sacrum gets kind of fuzzy looking right here, not clearly visible, is because that sacrum is sitting at such an angle and we are taking this view straight on A to P. This film is taken A to P and it is read P to A. You would expect to find the nameplate in the upper left hand corner or the lower right hand corner. That concludes this video.